major spoiler warning if you've not yet watched 73 yards i do recommend that you watch this first if you're not bothered about being spoiled go right ahead now little disclaimer it is okay to not like something and it is okay to like something if you like 73 yards that's absolutely great and if you didn't that's absolutely fine please comment below as to why you liked it or why you didn't like it it'll be great to hear from both sides so without further ado let's talk about the episode so i rate the episodes between one and ten one being absolutely goddamn awful and ten being outstanding and then i just can't criticize it whatsoever and then five is average and i'm going to give this episode a five out of ten it was average it was a million times better than boom and a million times better than any of the episodes that we've had since the giggle and that's saying something because i feel like the bar is not very high so here on the screen we have fisherman doctor and millie gibson now i love the scenery that is surrounding them here a natural fact i love the whole cinematography in this episode even though there are some things that i actually have issue with with regards to the story i do enjoy the cinematography of this episode it was very nice another thing that i really liked about the episode is the fact that it has a grounding in folklore now i wasn't entirely sure if i was going to take to that or not i do like folklore i do like mythology i do like mystery so i was a little bit apprehensive but it was okay i didn't mind it so much and also it gave me something to to grab onto and it took the doctor pretty much out of the equation almost straight away. I mean, right, okay, now bugbear out of mine. Why is the doctor always running into situations? Why is this version of the doctor always doing that? He gets locked inside a drum in the devil's cord. He steps on the bomb in Boom, a, a mine. And now in this one, he steps on a fairy circle, breaks the fairy circle, and then creates this whole... Uh, ripple effect so to speak timey wimey wibbly wobbly now i know in real life the reason why they did that was because shooty had another filming commitment which was sex education which is obviously a contract that he signed before doctor who so he would have had to have gone and filmed that which i must admit hands down full praise to miss gibson not being the star of the show right she is the supporting actress she then had to hold up essentially 40 minutes of this episode with no doctor that is hard work when you take the main character completely out of the equation and like it wasn't just like what would happen if the doctor um died like it was in turn left this was essentially there is no doctor this is ruby's life with no doctor being followed so the Doctor disappears. Now, a bugbear of mine is I actually feel like there should have been more reasoning behind this. I don't think it was very well backed up. Obviously, like I just said, we know he had another contract, so we know he had to go and film that. Uh, he can't get out of it. But I do actually feel like they needed to explain this a little bit more, particularly for new viewers who don't really understand how the current concept of Doctor Who actually works prospectively what had been really good was if doctor had been taken out of the equation in this episode but then trying to uh, see him in another dimension perhaps trying to get back to ruby in some way shape or form i think that would have been great one thing that i i didn't like about this was the fact that we didn't get the opening titles the opening title sequence of doctor who i understand why it was done it was done for dramatic purposes, but one of the things that leaves me feeling full, uh, feeling full of suspense with Doctor Who is those opening titles. You hear that music, and it's it's like, yes, it's Doctor Who. Your heart starts racing, and you're sat on the edge of your chair with anticipation. We had none of that. And directorially, as a as a drama, if you're doing that as a drama, this sort of thing, I think that would work absolutely fine. But for me taken out the titles it was just a bit of a major letdown i love the opening title sequence i i like the music i just want to hear it and i know i'm definitely watching doctor who because of it 
Um, but no, we straight went straight into Fisherman Doctor and Ruby coming out of the TARDIS. And um, it just felt a bit sort of flat. That anticipation of Doctor Who starting didn't build up. I mean, the episode itself, in general, it felt like Doctor Who, but it didn't feel like Doctor Who. And I think one of the reasons why that is, is because they removed the opening titles. Obviously, at this stage, we do not know who this woman is. However, I did actually work it out about 30 minutes in. Now, I do like the idea behind the fact that this was Ruby at the end. Ruby was seeing herself all along. I did like that idea conceptually. Was it really well executed? I think they could have done better. They could have pushed it a bit more. Yes, it could have been executed better, though, I do think. Oh, here we have um, Millie on the screen as Ruby Sunday. And this is when I started to get the real sort of feeling of the spectre of Lanyon Moore. If you don't know what that is, it's actually a big Finnish audio drama. It's it's based on folklore and fugus and things like that from from the past. And in the episode, in the Spectre of Lanyon Moor, there is a there is a hiker. She comes up like it happens here and she speaks to Evelyn like it happens here. And I just got this feeling that it was just so similar. And maybe even this plot, it had a light basis on the Spectre of Lanyon Moor. Interestingly, this is where Ruby asks if she's met this lady before the lady who is hiking and she said that she didn't think that she had okay so this mystery and um, this is susan twist isn't it so the mystery of who is this susan twist is happening all over again so this character is obviously then used to set up the premise for all the characters having the same reaction to this particular character the mystery woman which we later find out to be ruby and unfortunately because of that it made it a little bit predictable when we later get to the prime minister we know how essentially ruby is going to take down the prime minister and it becomes blatantly obvious that she was going to make it so that he reacts to her runs away and resigns and it's just like, can it have been a bit more imaginative than that? So we've got some stellar characters in the pub that Ruby actually shows up in. And I tell you something right now, and this is a bugbear of mine. I actually think every single one of those characters in that pub was underutilized. So they obviously use them for the horror aspect of the fairy circle being broken. And then they mocked her and, and things like that and being a joke. But to be honest with you, when you've got caliber like Sean Phillips... I think you could give her the chance to do more. But no, she was just there to offer a scare factor. Now, there's nothing wrong with having scare factors within Doctor Who. And in actual fact, this is another bugbear that I've got about this entire episode. There wasn't enough scare factors in it. There needed to be more scare factors. We needed to see more of the impact of the loss of the Doctor rather than just people... Di um, abandoning Ruby and playing into Ruby's fears of being abandoned. This was also the scene where they also did more religion bashing, which also, again, once again, offered absolutely no pushback on. I get it, programs bash religion, but in a family show, there really needs to be pushback. You need to see it from both sides to enable children's critical thinking. And to be honest with you, at this point in moment in time, they could have done more with the folklore aspects here. Sean Phillips's character could have been more into the aspects of the folklore. She could have put it down, you know, that kind of thing. There just seems to be nothing beyond the, the creativity of putting down a fairy circle, mocking uh, Ruby for it breaking, and then the Doctor disappearing, and that's it. You know, the essentially the entire premise and mystery of the episode is where is the Doctor and Ruby has been abandoned. They could have given it more mystery. So about 20 minutes in, I was actually starting to get a little bit bored. I was switching off a little bit. There wasn't enough reference back to the Doctor. And I really feel like that should have been pushed even more because the whole mystery is where is the Doctor? Where is the Doctor? 
And I didn't even find myself asking that question. And that is concerning. <laughs> that is really, really concerning because he's the main character. I should be knowing where is Fisherman Doctor? But alas, it just didn't do it for me. I just didn't pique my interest. Now, here, obviously, this is the first time so, so where we get the impression that this is going to be a timey, wimey timeline jump. And I felt like overall this episode was a regurgitation of Turn Left, just a, a very, very poor version of it. Acted fairly well, I will say, but just a really, really poor version. It would just never hold up to it because, like I say, there's no impact of the Doctor disappearing other than the fact that he's disappeared and the audience member through the eyes of, of Ruby, bearing in mind, fail to question it all the way through because, well, Ruby's not really questioning it because she, she's thinking about that woman. And yes, I agree, we need to obviously think about that woman, but we also need to question where the hell is the doctor. I do wish that Ruby had remained in Wales for a long time at the pub or in the cottage so that we could see more of the characters that we actually got in the pub. But she doesn't. She returns home to her mum. And of course, her mum tries to help her out and does a runner. Now, that is one heck of a stare. Yes, I would have liked it if Ruby had stayed in Wales and kept returning to the TARDIS uh, so that we could actually remember that the Doctor isn't there. Did anyone else forget to question where the Doctor was in that entire episode or was it just me? So, of course, Kate Lethbridge-Stewart makes a comeback now. I actually feel like, writing-wise, it did not sound like Kate Lethbridge-Stewart at all. I don't know if that's because it is an alternate Kate Lethbridge-Stewart or, or what. Um, I don't know what it was, but there was just something about the writing for Kate that didn't feel like Kate. Now, RTD wrote for her in The Giggle. And it sounded like her then, but I don't know. It's just something about it. Well, obviously, you know, Kate does a runner. So units are now completely out of the, the question. It jumps again, another period in time. And here is Ruby with her hair in a wig. It's a very ill-fitting wig, I must say. So bugbear about this character, this character, Roger A.P. Gwilliam, the Prime Minister... He is Mad Jack. They could have made a whole song and dance about this. They could have had Mad Jack in this from the very beginning. They had an opportunistic moment here with this character who is supposed to be absolutely stark raving bonkers and they didn't actually go with it. It's not until Ruby is 40 that they even introduce it. Okay, and this is what causes, obviously, the flashback of um, the Doctor, well, Fisherman Doctor saying this to Ruby about Roger A.P. Gwilliam and the nuclear war. And so, of course, you know, Ruby obviously sees her moment to perhaps potentially take this man down. And obviously, in my opinion, it is the most simplistic way of doing it. It is the most predictable way because they had already set up. But before I get to that bit, this new series of Doctor Who is being very obvious with the politics that they start weaving into their storylines. And it goes straight into talking about nuclear war and things like oppression. When he said the Welsh were oppressed, I rolled my eyes because I'm just so over the messaging. So, don't tell. The whole setup to this Prime Minister led to a very easy downfall because we were already told how it was going to happen at the very beginning, pretty much. He runs away, which obviously then leads to him resigning. That resolution of that character was extremely short. That character should have been in it for much longer than that. And I think you probably would have got much more creative writing had this character been introduced earlier. So obviously, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly means that we go 40 years later. A bit predictable. I knew that was going to happen. I'd pretty much already figured out by this point that this woman was older version of Ruby trying to save 
her past. And I think by this stage, Ruby has pretty much figured it out as well. And she knows that she is going to have to wait. This is the first time probably in about half an hour, I think it was, maybe-ish, that we return to the TARDIS. And obviously the TARDIS is worn. It's got flowers around it. People lay flowers. They don't even really know the reason why. There's nothing explained about that. And really, they should actually explain why people leave the flowers down. You know, maybe they think it's a monument. Maybe they think it's a grave, that sort of thing. But nothing. Nyada. So obviously we know at this point Ruby has already figured it out by herself and then she goes to her deathbed. So that's essentially perhaps what it's implying. And then obviously she sees probably one of the best things that we get all episode. And this is really what should have been happening nearly all of the way through. Nearly all the way through. But it didn't. This sort of like grudge horror moments where we're facing the back of the head, but we've got strobe lighting and this mysterious woman, this scary woman, whoever she is, we just didn't get that. And I would have loved to have seen that. This would have been so much more dot two. Obviously, they can't overdo it because there are young children who watch it, but dot two is always about leaving you on the edge of your seat with nerves, particularly with this sort of thing. And things like the Daleks, the Cybermen, they were all inclined to make you feel nervous. They were all there for the scare, with intelligent writing to go with it. So this utilisation of old Ruby just wasn't utilised enough, and it should have been. You know, we go back and we see the the same... Sort of, is that a weeping willow? I don't know what kind of tree it is. I'm not an expert on trees, but she's by that tree, and Ruby spots her. And she's in the background here, as you can see. And Fisherman Doctor is there. And he's like, what woman? What woman? Ruby, predictably, saves the own timeline by stopping the Doctor from stepping on a fairy circle and destroying the fairy circle. So all in all, much better than Boom, but certainly not the best. They can do better than what they did here. There were so many things that they could have expanded on here. Obviously, I know Shooty was unavailable, but they could have, when he came back, filmed an episode that involves his doctor trying to work out how to get back, in this case, Fisherman Doctor. Now, there are a lot of questions in this didn't, that didn't get answered. I'm guessing some of them are going to be left to the imagination, but there is a few things which I think they should potentially answer. And that is, why couldn't Ruby get into the TARDIS? Will there be a nuclear war now because Ruby in the new timeline doesn't stop the Prime Minister? Why did the Doctor disappear? Other than the contract, of course. So there was a lot of confusion on X as to exactly what was happening at the end some people didn't seem to understand this is could be because people were new to who um it also could be because this wasn't really explained it should have been explained more there should have been more details throughout the entire episode instead of it being quite quiet and quite calm it needed that intensity to push it and help people to perhaps understand what was going on but this is what I was able to work out so this may not be entirely correct but this is what I think people uh, need to know so the timeline we set I think that much was clear so the timeline resets though because the old woman that was following her young Ruby is old Ruby it is her and the thing that she's saying at the end which Ruby couldn't hear all the way throughout was don't step she old Ruby essentially was sending a past message to herself to tell um that to young Ruby to say to the doctor when they get there when Ruby gets to the old age to not step on the fairy circle and to break the fairy circle so she is the warning um and ruby does do that and the doctor listens and this and this prevents the time loop that was potentially going to occur however question for you all wouldn't this then go on to create a paradox I'm just throwing that out there without an answer. It's just a question. So does this episode stand a chance 
in the overnight viewing figures. Uh, I would say that it is going to have a bit of a struggle coming off of Boom. This probably should have been released before Boom, story-wise. This episode did everything that Boom should have done. This did things that Boom should have been doing, but it didn't. Boom only got a 2.04 million viewership in the overnight viewing figures. So this one is going to have to really rely on the word of mouth and Twitter in order to get itself promoted and feedback from tonight's viewing. Yes, I have some major bugbears, but writing-wise, it was a darn sight better than Boom, Devil's Chord, Space Babies, and the Church on Ruby Road. However, it was a huge letdown at the same time because I feel like for me as a Doctor Who viewer and someone who's been watching Doctor Who since I was a kid, it, it it just needed to push the boundaries a lot more than what it already did. However, hats off to Millie for holding up an episode by herself. The major downside to this episode was that Fisherman Doctor was not there and I was not led by the companion and the writing for that companion to constantly think about the doctor in turn left that works because in turn left they're getting you to think about donna's life without the doctor all of these catastrophic things happening because the doctor is not there this is all because of an alternate parallel world that's built around donna they tried doing that with this particular episode but it just didn't meet the mark and that's for me, personally. Did it meet the mark for you? Remember, you are actually allowed to like an episode and you are allowed to dislike it. If you liked it, let me know why you liked it. If you didn't like it, let me know why you didn't like it. I will be back with another video soon. This was a special episode on a Saturday released especially for you. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to my channel. Thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. I can't believe it so many subscribers in such a short space of time for a small channel that's a huge achievement so i will see you in the next video i'm live tomorrow night at 7 p.m on the, the sense sphere so tune in there i'll be explaining more of my opinions there on the actual episode i will see you in the next video thanks for watching bye bye